Hi, and welcome to this training video. In this video, we will take a closer look at the router section. The router section is the main user interface for surfaces to interact with the button's routing system. By default, all sources and destinations compatible with the button's routing system will be available in the router section. Throughout this training video, we will be clicking on buttons on the canvas to execute actions. This is achieved by holding the shift button on your keyboard while clicking the on-screen buttons. To create a router section, simply click in the cell where you want the section to start. Then click and hold the left mouse button while you drag to cover all the cells you want to include. Release the mouse button. The cells will now have a dashed outline. Press R or right-click within the outline and select Router to create the section. In the Router section, your sources will appear in blue. Your destinations will appear in purple. Any selected source or destination will be shown in white and gray. If you select a destination, the current route will be indicated by a lighter shade of blue on the Source button. There are also two filter buttons. These can be used to narrow down the selection of sources or destinations. The filters shown here are created automatically when adding compatible connections, but you can also create your own. We'll get back to how you can set that up later in the video. The filter buttons also show the number of sources and destinations available in your router section. You can select more than one filter to increase or decrease your selection. To get back out of the filter selection, just click the filter buttons again. The number shown on the buttons now indicates the number of filters applied to the selection. If the clear button is red, it will clear the sources and destinations set up to be routed, and if it's orange, it will clear the filters. If you select any of the sources or destinations, buttons will automatically filter your view to only show compatible sources or destinations. When you have selected both a source and destination, the take button will change color to green and indicate which ports will be routed. For example, if we select a source and destination from the ATOM Extreme, it only shows one V, since the ATOM Extreme doesn't allow for separate routing of the different ports in the bundle. If we choose a source and destination from the ATEM Constellation, you'll see that the Take button shows one V2A, which indicates that one video port and two audio ports will be routed. Now, if we select the Auto button, we are given the choice to deselect some of the ports in the bundle. So let's deselect the video port of the bundle. Now, the Take button only shows 2A, which means that if we push the button now, we will only route the audio ports of the bundle. With the Shuffle option, we can have even more granular control. Let's select a destination from the Atom Constellation and the MADI-1 source. When pressing Shuffle, we get access to set up a route for 64 source audio channels to 16 destination audio channels. By default, it gives you a one-to-one -one route, but you can change that by selecting a destination channel and then assigning the source, like this. If you want to have a look at the current active route for the destination, you can click on the purple destination button. You can also clear any of the routes by selecting the destinations and pressing the clear button. This will leave the current route in place. Finally, to make the selected route, press the Take button. Now let's have a look at the inspector and go through the different options for the router section. In the layout option, we can change the layout of the whole section to best suit the work environment. The quad layout may work best for those who have a larger surface and use filters a lot. The duo is the default layout and should fit most situations. Every function is easily available and still fits into smaller surfaces. The mono layout is suitable for those who have very large numbers of sources and destinations. Here, the sources and destinations are on their own pages, and you have a button to switch between them. The locked destination layout is perfect when you want to use the router section as a monitor selector or any other single destination source selector. The router section is scrollable by default, but it does not show any scroll buttons unless enabled. You can turn on the scroll bar by using the scroll bar position buttons right here. The layout ratio slider moves the divider between sources and destinations, great for adjusting uneven distribution between them. Under options, you can turn on or off some options, auto take, 
automatically takes a route when both source and destination are selected. Text scroll allows oversized labels to scroll back and forth to show the full label. Auto close filter closes the filter menu once a selection is made, perfect for quick selection. Clear selection after take automatically clears the source and destination after a route is taken. In the source slash destination selections dialog, you can limit the sources and destinations available in the router section. This is done using tags. We'll cover tags in detail in a later video, but for now, we'll use some pre-made tags. Under the producer tag, we've made a selection of sources and destinations we want the producer to have access to. To limit the router section, click in either of the boxes to open the dialog. Find the producer tag and add it to both source and destination. Click apply. Just like that, we now have a router section that shows only a limited set of sources and destinations. With this example, we'd probably also change the layout to locked destination, since there's no need to show the destination here. We could also resize the whole section to the selected buttons. To bring back all sources and destinations, click in one of the source destination selection boxes again to bring up the dialog. Click the clear buttons above the assignment boxes. Click Apply. To add your own elective filters, click in the filtering boxes and select the tag collections you want to use as filters. We've pre-made a couple of sample tags for this example. To remove tag collections, click the filter boxes again, click on the collections you want to remove, then click the red clear button and click apply to save your changes. Under labels, you can choose which labels will be used for each of the three available lines. This way, you can fine tune the label setup for each router section in your system. Under label strategy, you can choose the fallback strategy for your label setup. Name and external custom labels are fetched from the connection. All connections have a name for their sources and destinations, but these may be less informative, like in one and out one. Some devices also allow user configurable labels where you can give sources or destinations more useful names like cam one or monitor one. These will be fetched under external custom label. The user setup and installation labels are button specific. We'll come back to how you can edit those in the next video. Here under Label Strategy, you decide the fallback order. So, if there is no label in the user box, it falls back to Setup. If Setup is empty, it falls back to Installation, and so on. That wraps up this video about the router section. See you back here for the next video, where we'll go through the routing UI. I hope this was helpful. Make sure to subscribe for more training videos like this.